Hi, welcome to Goodfellow. My name is Joe Alexo. I'm the Global Marketing Manager. And with us, we have the CEO, Stephen Aldersley. All right, and we're here at the Nanotechnology here in Thessaloniki. And uh, hi. Hi, I'm, hi Nicholas. Uh, I'm Stephen Aldersley. I'm the CEO of Goodfellow. Goodfellow is a company which supplies small to medium sized quantities of pure metals, alloys, ceramics, polymers. We've been around for Gosh, we've been around since 1947 and we've been doing what we do for the last 70 years. Just as an indication of the types of things that we do, this is a periodic table which we publish as part of our marketing collateral. And everything which you see here in grey, I hope the camera can pick it out, everything which you see here in grey are materials which Goodfellow supplies in one form or another. It's more than half the period, period table. There's a big quantities of different things. Absolutely, absolutely. We sell a lot of a lot of a lot of materials, a lot of materials. And you're and based uh, where? We're based in the UK, but we sell our products. We supply product globally. And uh, if I could introduce you now to Goodfellow's technical manager, Dr. Aphrodite Tomu, she'll give you a broad overview of some of the products which Goodfellow is supplying. All right. Hi. Aphrodite. Hello. Hello. So uh, here at the Nanotechnology Conference, uh, all this is relevant? Uh, at the moment, yes. You can use different type of products of these ones as a substrate. For example, you can use yeah. our copper foils to... Do you want to... Oh, yeah. 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 So, so... So what is this, for example? So, for example, these are foils that we have metal foils and you can use them as a substrate. For example, you can use our copper foils, which is without oxygen, they're oxygen free, and you can use them as a substrate to, to what kind of Yes, uh, to, kind of to synthesize, for example, graphene, which is the nanotechnology one. So talking about graphene, I would like you to show you this one. So this is an epoxy. However, if the graphene is not functionalized, then you don't have a good dispersion. However, if it's functionalized and you embedded the graphene in the epoxy, then the functionalization is helping for the dispersion and you have an amazing dispersion, as you can see, in the epoxy. And this is useful for? This is useful for different applications. So graphene has to be embedded in different matrices. For example, this epoxy or polymer, and you can use it as a filter, you can use it um, for mechanical properties, you can use it in different applications. What are all these things you have here? All right, this is just a demonstration of how raw materials will look like. So for example, indium will look like this. I think it's indium. Yeah, it is indium. So in a raw form, it looks like this foil. Uh, what is the one that I like the most is the bismuth, which yeah. is oxidizing and makes these colors as well. However, indium, bismuth, bismuth or other products like platinum, like this one as well, we have them in different forms. This is just raw materials. So people can be uh, familiar with the materials and how they look like in a raw form. Okay. Do you work with all the mines and stuff like that? Or where do you get all this stuff? Yes, these are mine, to be honest. Uh, but we are getting our stuff from, we have different partners. So we're getting our stuff from different partners. For example, these are metal tubes, and this is a ceramic tube, this is a polymer tube. We do polymer cubes, we do... You do what? Discs as well, metal discs. Uh, this is... Um, specially shaped. Specially shaped, yes. Uh, it's called mesh. So it's a copper mesh, this one. We do fasteners as well, and here you can see the different yeah, metal forms, which yeah. are very interesting. This is a honeycomb shape, and these are precision spheres, uh, ceramic precision spheres as well. The metal forms, they are very... Uh, they have the same properties with the, the material because this is aluminium and this is copper so they have the same mechanical properties but they are lighter so they can use for example in aerospace so you are in so space for, yes we do we do you have do a, space stuff yes we do uh, we are um, you have customers in all kinds we of have, yes yes we have customers in aerospace in electronic uh, sectors um, mechanical engineering uh, automotive um, 
I, I would say electronic devices as well. I would say most of them in different. Yeah. So this is another form, this is an aluminum form which has a different type and a different uh, structure with the previous one. So this is a regular aluminum form. Yeah. The cells are have the same size and shape all over the structure. Yeah. This is another ceramic form, and then here you can, see, you, you can see that we can identify and justify or clarify the porosity. So we can do different porosities in materials. This is ceramic alumina one, and a high purity one. This is a pink alumina. It does have a chromium oxide in it, so it can be pink. These are also aluminum forms, different porosities. And this is a cladded one, aluminum foam as well, as you can see at the back, it's cladded with aluminum for different applications. And all these things are mass produced or? Yes, they are mass produced and they are readily available if in our, in, they are in our catalog the next day to our customers. So what I would like to introduce because yeah. we are discussing about and we are in nanotechnology yeah. is this exceptional shoulder, which is one of a kind, I would say. And it can, uh, Which yes, one? It can yeah. solder, you cannot see, it is the solder, this one. Okay. So it can solder comp comp uh, carbon components to different matrices, for example copper, so you don't have to nickel plate the copper. This is very nice. And you can have the electrical conductivity uh, straight away to your copper plate, so it, it can be used in PCBs applications, IT applications. Yeah. You can also um, solder graphite, and what is most important, you can solder aluminum to aluminum. Until now, you couldn't solder aluminum to aluminum. You were only using fluxes, and fluxes are oxidizing the aluminum. Or silicon carbide for solar cells, you can see. They are used in solar cells, again, silicon carbide here and you can solder with this which is called sea solder is it difficult to use the solder uh, no but this one has an exceptional uh, type procedure so and there is also in our YouTube and you're the only ones who have done yes, this so far yes yes and the material is for the solder the material is a, um, a lead free lead free uh, solder Tin-based solder, to be honest. Tin. Tin-based solder. It Nobody has... else does this. No. Uh, well, we our partners is this one, this company, and we are doing it together. So yes, nobody else does that. It's, we are uh, distributors of this. And what is this? Exclusive distributors. These are wires. They can use. Yeah. These are wires, metal wires, and a polymer here. And they can use different applications depending on for what you want to use from electronic devices or engineering projects as well. Nice. So what I would like to discuss to you because we are at nanotechnologies that yeah. we, we don't have the materials here because they're powders of course, but it's we have another green graphene. It's, can, it's not here. I can, no. yeah. Well, it's carbon, so it's if you carbon. have carbon, yeah. So we have a green graphene, which is produced by a plasma reactor, and it's the only green graphene in the market. It's mass production, of course. It doesn't have any catalysts, and it can be used, if it's green, you can use, you can understand it can be used, it's biocompatible and it doesn't have any toxicity, so it can be used also in biomedical applications, so for drug delivery, it can be used because it has exceptional surface area, it can be used, um, uh, <laughs> any applications that graphene. Graphene is a wonder material, so even for filters, for desalination of water, water desalination, and everywhere. So you do lots of stuff for the... We do a lot of nano nanoparticles as well, metal nanoparticles, different metal nanoparticles, like you can have uh, titanium nanoparticles or iron nanoparticles, and they can be used, again, in different applications, from biochemistry to um, electronic devices. Um, uh, or to coatings for uh, the corrosion resistance, for corrosion resistance. And these nanoparticles are green as well. They are produced for a green method because sustainability, I would say that it's a key challenge in industries at the moment. And green products are more important nowadays. So we have like an awareness of uh, environmental awareness, awareness. And also we think that the, uh, we are providing the best materials for our customers, to be honest. And um, except from the uh, metal nanoparticles, we also have the boron nitride nanotubes, which is they are declaring to be the researchers are declare, declaring that these boron nitride nanotubes will be the fourth evolutionary material in industry. And you do that? 
And yes, we do that. Yes, boron we have that. Boronitride nanotubes. So boron they are like the carbon, carbon nanotubes with the mechanical right. properties, but this is an insulator, while carbon nanotubes can be semiconductors or metallic. So you combine them with carbon nanotubes? But you can combine them if you want, but you can use them alone because of the boron uh, absorbance, for example, and the neutron absorbance because it has boron, they can be used in aerospace or in nuclear sectors. So we have different materials uh, for different applications. Yes. Yes. So um, maybe you can come over here. So um, how does it work, the, the, the business model? The, do people just buy by, by the gram, by the kilo, or how does it work? Uh, we, and do, then we, do not have, we do not have any, I would say, limitations in quality, in quantity, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and no limitations in quantity. And uh, if we have already have them in stock, then the customer will have it the next day. And then, uh, do you implement the things in the final products, or you just provide the material? People we do provide their own material, and people do whatever they want. And there's some more information about here. What, what yes. do you see here? So we are a 70 years company, all right, and we had the established in 1946 in London. And until now, we have different divisions, like we have the glass division and ceramic division, and we have also um, uh, an office in Shanghai. We have an office in France. Uh, our headquarters, of course, are in Cambridge, and we have also an office uh, yeah. in um, in Germany, uh, and of course in the US. Products. We have over seventy thousand products. These seventy thousand products are readily available, and in the, in in they are in our catalog. Our customers are more than sixty thousand, and we also do uh, custom-made pro products for the customers. And these are the different some uh, of the yes. categories. So yes, we can do alloys, metals, ceramics, polymers, compounds, and composites. Nice. We also have scientists and engineers in house. Like my team, uh, we have a technical team which is more available and can suggest materials or it can solve problems to your application. For example, we are suggesting the materials that is more suitable and more applicable in your application, and we are. Um, um, more than welcome if you would like to send us an email with your uh, research project what would you like to have and achieve and we may suggest you a nice material for your applications to and you can send it to technical do you work with many like startups uh, new we, wo we work with startups we, wo we work with r d we work with national labs we work with industry automotive as i said uh, aerospace we work with all kind of uh, industries that they have research groups to be honest, and they do research. Do you work with gold too? Uh, of course we work with gold, well, yes. New, you're, I'm <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, I'm sorry. And, yeah, and, and here's... Yes. Um, yes, the key industry sectors is physics, chemistry, manufacturing, as I said, electronics, aerospace, and of course material sciences. We do custom manufacturing products, as we said, like precision machining, forming, coating, and we do have large quantity. These are the forms that we have for our products, so different forms, different shapes, and yes. sizes if they are for nanomaterials. Of Does that mean you have big machines that enable you to do all these things? And yes, our headquarters and we have a lab, we have, a, um, I don't know how to say it, but uh, yes. Big uh, systems. Big, <laughs> big systems. Yeah. I don't know, I don't like big systems. Yeah. Uh, but we have um, machining department as well and we have a production department as well of course and we do different types of materials and forms depending on customer specifications.